In today's tutorial, we are going to do a JavaScript problem. I think a great way to learn JavaScript better is by solving problems. So in my weekly tutorials, at times, I will be including JavaScript problems and then go through the process of solving those problems. With today's problem, we will look at two different approaches to computing a Fibonacci sequence. So what we want to do is write a function that will return a Fibonacci sequence. Now, a Fibonacci sequence is simply a sequence of numbers in which each number equals the sum of the two preceding numbers. Traditionally, this starts with 0 and 1. So a sample Fibonacci sequence would be 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5. So for example, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, and you keep going like that. Now, this particular problem may not be a problem that you will use in any project that you're working on. And many problems are like that. But solving these kind of problems can teach you coding techniques and patterns. And so that's the purpose of them. So for this problem, we will create a function that reads in a starting array. And that will be an array with two numbers, the start of the Fibonacci sequence. It also reads in a length, how many numbers we want in the sequence. Finally, it will return an array with the sequence of numbers. Now, if you'd like to try this problem before you watch the solution, go ahead and pause the video, give it a try, and when you're ready to review the solution, restart the video. Okay, I'm going to present two solutions to this problem. One will use a while loop in the function, and the other will use recursion. Now, if you would like a review of recursion, I provided a link in the description section of this video to a tutorial I've done on recursion. So let's do the solution with the loop first. So let me jump to Sublime and we'll get started. Now, first thing I'm going to do is set up the function. I'm going to call it Fibonacci. And with this function, remember, we're passing in two parameters. The first parameter is going to be an array with the starting numbers, two numbers to start with. And then we'll have a length. That length will be how many numbers we want in the Fibonacci sequence. So there is our function set up. We now need to declare some variables. So num1, that is the first number in the Fibonacci sequence, or as it progresses, it will be the subsequent numbers. And I'm going to grab that first number from the result array, which is passed in. Then num2, that's going to be the second number from the array that is passed in. And these numbers will change as we continue to figure out the Fibonacci sequence. So I'm going to use the same variable to figure out the sequence. To start with, it will be the first and second number. Then it will be the second and third number. Then it will be the third and fourth number, and so on. That's how we'll proceed through it. I need a variable next. Next is going to be the number that comes next in the sequence, which is really the sum of num1 and num2. That's how we figure out that Fibonacci sequence. And then finally, I'm going to need a variable that counts how many numbers are in the sequence. So to begin with, we need to set that to 2 because we start with 2. That's what the array will have that is passed in. All right, now we can set up our loop that's going to compute the sequence. So I'm going to use a while loop. And we're going to run the loop while count number is less than the total number that is passed in. While that count is less than that, we want to continue to figure out the sequence. So the first step in figuring out that sequence is to determine the next number in the sequence. So next equals num1 plus num2. Now that we have the next number, 
Let's now adjust num1 and num2 to represent the last two numbers in the sequence. We always want num1 and num2 to be the last two numbers in the sequence because we are using them to figure out the next number. So now let's adjust those. So num1 will become num2. See how we're doing that? And then num2 will become what? It will become next. So now the next time through the loop, it will have the correct numbers to figure out the next number in the sequence. Now we want to return an array that has this full sequence in it. Let's just use the same array that was passed in. So result.push, we're going to add this next number to the sequence. So we're simply going to push next onto that array. And then finally, we need to increment the count variable so that we keep track of how many we've done. When that loop is done, we will return the array. All right, so that's our function that will, that will determine the Fibonacci sequence. Let's go ahead and give that a try. So I'm going to save that, jump out, refresh, and then open the console. Now I'm going to call that function, and I'm going to pass in an array. I'm going to start our Fibonacci sequence with the traditional numbers that we normally use. And then I want to pass in a length of 15. I want to have a total of 15 numbers in this sequence. So let's go ahead and press return and see what we get. Here is our array, and we can see our sequence. 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8. That continues on, clear up until 144 plus 233 is 377. And I used 15 specifically because I know that the last number in a Fibonacci sequence of 15 is 377. So I wanted to make sure that was correct. So it looks like that's working correct for us. So a simple matter of setting up variables and then using the while loop to add two numbers together and then adjusting those variables so that we can figure out what the next number is. Each time pushing the number we have achieved onto the array so that we don't lose that information. All right, that's using a while loop. Now I said I was going to do a second solution, and this solution is going to use recursion. Recursion can sometimes be a little bit more difficult to think about, but it works great for solving this particular problem, so I want to give that a try. So I'm going to set up a second function, just call it fib2 equals function. And we're going to pass in the same information, result, array, and a length. Now, I'm going to give this function a name. Right now, it's an anonymous function assigned to a variable, fib2. I could do a function declaration, but I usually like to use function expressions. And so this is how I set up my function. But when I'm doing recursion, then it's a good idea to give the function a name. In this case, I'm going to use the exact same name as the variable. Could be different, but I'm going to use the same name. Now, when we're doing recursion, we need a way to jump out of the recursion. So recursion is when a function calls itself. And so we would continue to call that function over and over again, would be in an infinite loop if we did not have a way to jump out of, out of that function. So I'm going to use an if statement to determine when we can jump out. And I want to check the length of the array. The array is what we're going to be using to put the Fibonacci sequence in. So if that length is greater than or equal to len, the number that we want in the sequence, well, then I will return result, and that will end the function. It won't call it again here. It will simply return the result, so it will end it. Okay. Now, if I'm not ready to end it, then what I want to do is I want to add to the result array a new number. And I'm going to do that by pushing. Now, what are we going to push? I haven't figured anything out yet. Up here, we determined our next number, and that's what we pushed. Well, we can determine our next number based upon what is already in the array. So if we always use 
the second to last and the last number in the array and we add those together, that will be the next number we want to push onto the array. And so we can do that like this. Result, and I want to grab result.length, whoops, minus two. Result.length minus two is going to be the second to last number. If we have a total of two numbers in the array, the length is two. Two minus two is zero. So that points to the very first value in that array. And we're going to add that to result. And then we want to grab result dot length minus one, which will be the last number in the array. So that's going to add a new number to our array. So the first time we call this, we'll end up with three elements in the array. Well, if we want to continue to adding more elements in the array, we need to call our function again. So the way we do that is we return a call to the same function. And we pass in result. We have now updated the result array. We pass that in. And then we pass in the same length that we received before. And so that will call it again. It will then check this if statement, see if the length is now greater than or equal to the len variable that we passed in. If so, it won't compute a new number for the array. It will simply return the result. So if recursion is new to you, think about this for a little bit so you can understand what is going on here. You may also want to review the tutorial I did on recursion which goes in a little more detail explaining how it works. But give that some thought and the way it is working here. Also something that is new in this solution is the way we've determined what the next number is. We simply used the array we already had. We didn't create new variables to do that. We simply used that array and worked with what we already had in that array. All right, let's make sure this works. So let me save this, jump out, refresh. Now we're calling fib2. I want to pass in the same starting array and the same length. And let's see what we get. And there we go. We've received an array in return that has the same Fibonacci sequence. So two different approaches to solving that. And the important thing about this problem was not so, so much the fact that we solved the problem, but hopefully there are some things learned along the way, some things we can do with JavaScript that may be helpful to you. So if you found that helpful, please like the video. To view other videos from our channel, you can click the video link in the center of the screen. To subscribe to our channel, click the circle link on the left. We have new tutorials every week and to visit our website where we have all the tutorials we've ever created organized in different categories, you can click the link on the right. Thanks for watching.